Everyone's talking about Gravity Falls recently. I mean, especially me. <laughs> Ever since the Book of Bill came out back in July, the Gravity Falls fandom has been lit up like a Christmas tree. It's like 2013 all over again. Everyone's so excited and nostalgic about the show again. And of course, that brings up the same old question we've been asking for years, will Gravity Falls come back? I mean, the Book of Bill came with this big ARG mystery and a website that all seemed like it was building up to something, but over a month later, nothing has really happened, so, is it coming back? It's honestly a fair question. But the other question I don't think anyone's really asking is, if Gravity Falls did come back, how? Like, what would a Gravity Falls comeback actually look like? And would it even be a good idea? Should Gravity Falls come back? Now, don't get me wrong, Gravity Falls is an amazing cartoon. Genuinely one of the best, not just of the 2010s, but of like all time. And I know I'm the guy who's made multiple videos called Pretending Gravity Falls Isn't Over, or whatever. This show is great, and on the surface, more of it would be really fun. But after my last video on the Book of Bill, seeing how intensely people have responded to the ARG and how much of a renewed passion for Gravity Falls has sprung up all around it, I keep thinking about whether or not continuing this show would in some way spoil the lightning in a bottle genius of Gravity Falls. And as a result, thinking of how you could realistically revive something like Gravity Falls in a way that doesn't completely dump on everything that came before. It's an interesting thing to think about. I mean, let's be real. It's not like we have a shortage of Gravity Falls media. Here on the channel, beyond the show, we've looked at the shorts, the books, the toys, and even the video game, which, don't worry, I will be talking more about later on. Now, while I might have already done an entire video on the Gravity Falls game, if you're looking for another game about a quirky small town hiding mysterious fantastical secrets, then might I introduce to you Bloomtown A Different Story, the new RPG from Twin Sales Interactive who are graciously sponsoring today's video. Thank you, Twin Sales! Bloomtown is an RPG developed by Lazy Bear Games and Different Sense games and published by Twin Sales Interactive. It's all about a girl named Emily and her younger brother Chester who are spending their summer vacation with their grandpa in what looks like a cozy quiet town, but when nightmares become more real and children start going missing, it becomes clear that there is more than meets the eye happening. And it's up to you to help the townsfolk fight off their demons and uncover the mystery of this town. And taking inspiration from RPGs like the Persona and Pokemon series, you can summon your own inner demons to help fight in the game's turn-based battles and capture weakened creatures to to add to your party. Plus, the game's got a really fun, offbeat sense of humor, balancing the more spooky, mysterious stuff with some fun, lighthearted moments and pop culture references and stuff like that. And I know that that's a vibe you guys are gonna dig. And of course, all this is wrapped up with some gorgeous pixel art and a cozy 1960s Americana vibe. But you know, with demons, Demons are also part of it. And if all that sounds cool to you, then you can check out Bloomtown A Different Story on Steam, PS4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and Nintendo Switch right now. All you gotta do is click on the very top link in this video's description. Again, that is Bloomtown A Different Story, a quirky fantasy RPG about discovering the mysterious secrets of a normal quiet town, available on Steam and most major modern game consoles right now. And you can check it out at the very top link in this video's description. Major thanks to Twin Sales Interactive and Bloomtown for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to Gravity Falls. And of course, I, I assume we all know the basic setup of Gravity Falls by now, but in order to really understand what I'm gonna talk about here, I feel like you gotta have the full context. And I also refuse to leave out the uninitiated. So if you've heard this spiel a thousand times, keep it to yourself. So. <clears throat> Gravity Falls was a Disney cartoon that premiered in 2012 and ran all the way to 2016. And over those four years, the show got a whopping total of two seasons. Yeah, there were a lot of gaps in the release schedule. The show was created by Alex Hirsch and centered around two twins named Dipper and Mabel Pines being shipped off to Gravity Falls, Oregon for their summer vacation. While there, they stay with their great uncle Stan Pines who runs a tourist trap called the Mystery Shack. And in the first episode, Dipper stumbles upon this journal that catalogs all the weird, paranormal, supernatural natural stuff that goes on in Gravity Falls. Which, of course, Dipper and Mabel quickly start to experience firsthand. Zombies, minotaurs, dinosaurs, wizards, gnomes multiple times. Dipper and Mabel's summer in Gravity Falls is defined by weird junk happening. And all the while, Dipper's trying to figure out who wrote the mysterious journal that's been helping them deal with all this crazy stuff. Well, it's spoiler time. Turns out it was all the work of Grunkle Stan's long lost twin brother, Stan. 
double stands. Well, okay, one is Stan Lee and the other is Stan Ford. So we just call them Stan and Ford for short. If Ford over here got lost in another dimension after a fight with Stan Lee accidentally sent him tumbling through a portal machine. It was a big deal in the show, huge reveal, massive piece of animation history in the last 10 years. Anyway, right around the time that Stanford is brought back to Gravity Falls, the gang all then have to fight the biggest threat yet, an interdimensional chaos demon and New York Times bestselling author, Bill Cipher. He sparks this intense apocalyptic event called Weird Mageddon, where he opens up a portal to something called the Nightmare Realm and just lets it all spill out into Gravity Falls. But after tricking Bill into entering Grunkle Stan's mind, they use a mind erasing gun, d don't ask, it's a thing, to wipe Stan's memory, taking Bill with it. But luckily, Grunkle Stan gets all of his memories back and everything goes back to normal, totally not accidentally leaving the door open for Bill Cipher to come back and causing the fandom to go absolutely wild with theories. No, <clears throat> nah, not at all. That is the biggest oversimplification I think I have ever done. Uh, I did a whole video recapping the plot of Gravity Falls that uh, I'll link to at the end of this video if you want more details, or you can just watch the show. It's good, and it's not that long. Shut up. So, with all that in mind, where do you go from here? Well, in my opinion, there are five realistic options. Option one, season three. A pretty obvious place to start this is what everyone's been begging for for ages, especially recently. Gravity Falls had two seasons, you know, 40 episodes, just... Keep it going! The show ends with the message, see you next summer, so just jump forward to the next summer. Come up with some new villains and mysteries and just let the Mystery Shack crew get back to their old schedule. Easy, right? Yeah, come on, Alex Hirsch. You know your groundbreaking animated series that told one of the most well-constructed stories in the genre and was filled with incredibly intricate and well-thought-out mysteries? Just do it again! Get back on the wheel! There are some good things about this option. For one, there's really nothing wrong with just wanting to see your comfort characters back in a familiar place. Hearing those voices and music and experiencing that sharp sense of humor again. It's nostalgic, and there is a lot of merit in that. Even if it's easy to get cynical since nostalgia has been so weaponized for marketing these days, revisiting something that wants to find a very important and impactful part of your life is a powerful and worthwhile thing to explore. But beyond that nostalgia, what more would you really expect from a third season of Gravity Falls? Let alone a fourth, or fifth, sixth, or however many. In order for Gravity Falls to just pick back up where it left off, there would not only need to be a whole suite of new one-off stories written, but there would also need to be new mysteries and twists and turns developed from the ground up that are able to then one-up everything from the original series. That is, if you want the new seasons to actually be at the same quality as the original and not just exist for the sake of existing. You know, this isn't Phineas and Ferb, where continuing the show is as easy easy as making a list of new machines to build. Gravity Falls is still beloved to this day because of the incredibly detailed and thorough mysteries, plot twists, and character arcs. And it completed all of those back in 2016. That's eight years ago. To revive and continue a show like Gravity Falls in the same spirit of the original would require creating new mysteries that are just as in-depth, developing full-fledged ARGs for fans to decipher in the real world, and finding ways to up the stakes from events like Stanford's reveal in the Weird Mageddon finale. Not to mention having to create new arcs for each of the characters to go through, which is a really delicate process. A lot of sequels or continuations are honestly really bad at this. Oftentimes, instead of a character going through a new arc, they just kind of undo the character development from the original so they can just learn the same lesson again. This is the kind of thing that can kill a previously beloved character in a sequel or reboot. Plus, a continuously having to up the ante when it comes to threats and plot twists, that's how shows usually wind up jumping the shark. Ultimately, I think bringing Gravity Falls back for a third season is just way more complicated than it initially might sound. And if it's handled even a little wrong, it could really mess up the damn near perfect ending the show went out on. But you know, that's not the only way Gravity Falls could come back. You know, if we're looking to not mess up the original ending, then I guess there's always option two prequel show. Gravity Falls is a show that takes place over a very long stretch of time. I mean, yeah, the main story only takes place over Dipper and Mabel's summer break, but once you start delving into Stan's backstory, Ford's backstory, Bill Cipher's backstory, the events of this series stretch out for a long time. So obviously, that means there's plenty of material to build off for a prequel, right? Honestly? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, a prequel series wouldn't be too bad of an idea on paper. And anyone who delved into the whole Book of Bill ARG on thisisnotawebsite.com.com knows that there's maybe a little bit of precedent for this. 
dang it. Okay, for the uninitiated, there's been this big ARG mystery going on ever since the newest Gravity Falls book dropped back in July. And part of that mystery has been a website where you can enter code words to unlock secrets. But the reason I bring it up is because on that site, if you entered the code season three, you'd get a message back that just said season two. Season two got a message that said season one, but then typing in season one got a message that read season negative one anti-gravity falls. It's pretty hard to read that as anything other than a prequel pitch. Maybe it's Alex Hirsch just messing with us or something, but it presents an interesting idea. What all did go down in Gravity Falls before Dipper and Mabel showed up? When they got there, Gravity Falls was already overrun with weird supernatural stuff. And Ford lived in the mystery shack for like six years, exploring the town's strange phenomena and cataloging it in all the journals. And we see bits of that in the show, especially once Ford makes his deal with Bill Cipher, so we'd know more or less how this story would end. But still, there's a ton of unexplored stories you could tell in that space of time. But technically, uh, those stories have kinda already been explored, just in the books. Yeah, I found this out recently. Journal 3 isn't just some novelty logbook. This is, essentially, a huge chunk of Ford's story prior to the events of the show. Journal 3 basically is the Gravity Falls prequel, but there are still tons of stories that even this book skips over. See, Journal 3 explores Ford's life in Gravity Falls six years into his experiments. This puts things right around the time his partnership with Bill Cipher went sour. And of course, Ford loses his journal not long after this once his argument with Stanley gets out of control and he's pushed through a portal into another dimension. So obviously, uh, Ford's entries in the journals stop there until he gets the book back 30 years later. 30 years! 30 years this dude spent exploring another dimension and survived to tell the story. Except, that story's never really been told at least not in full. I think this you know, anti-gravity falls would be a great way to explore Ford's exile in another dimension. Because clearly this dude went through a lot in that time and exploring different dimensions would give the show endless possibilities. But despite that, I, I don't really know if this is something that could work like long-term. Ford's a great character and it would be great to explore him and his story a bit closer since you know he was kind of a late addition to the show. But this hypothetical prequel definitely feels like the kind of show that would last like one season, like a minute series. I would say kind of like Adventure Time's Fiona and Cake, but apparently that's getting a second season anyway, so doesn't really prove my point. <clears throat> now, of course, Ford's story isn't the only one you could explore. You could follow Stanley and all of his failed get-rich-quick schemes. You know, make it more of a comedy show with some family drama baked in. Or, I mean, there's always Bill. Sure, he's the villain of the show, but he's also clearly the most interesting character with the most sordid backstory. The Book of Bill goes super in-depth on Bill's history, where he's from, why he left, and what he did after. We get a lot of stories in this book about Bill meeting a new human, tricking them into partnering up, and trying to convince them into building a portal that Bill could use to spark weird Mageddon. But every time, those plans fail and Bill has to start over from scratch. And I mean, these stories go back hundreds of years, at least. And if you handled it just just right, I could see this being a fun prequel series. The misadventures of Triangle Dangle is a little tangle. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe we can workshop the title. But you know, basically a show about Bill's life. His birth in the second dimension, the series of unfortunate events that led him to leave his home for the Nightmare Realm, the crazy adventures he went on with his hench maniacs, and his eventual series of failed attempts to cause weird Mageddon. I think there's a lot of potential here, but I can also see a number of issues. For one, uh, we're kind of looking at two different shows here. The story of Bill in the second dimension and his glory days in the Nightmare Realm, that's one thing. One pretty straightforward, ongoing story. But then, once Bill reaches the point where he's constantly trying to trick humans into being his partner, we lose a lot of that consistent narrative in in favor of a much more formulaic, kind of comedy-focused series. You know, like how Phineas and Ferb has the boys tackle a new project only for it to disappear at the end of every episode, or how Doofenshmirtz has a new evil plan that Perry the Platypus thwarts every time, that kind of thing. That's kind of what this second half of the Bill Cipher show would turn into. Every time Bill nearly gets his portal built, it all crumbles and it's back to square one. That's a whole different kind of show. So the question becomes, how do you balance these two very different stories? You know, which do you prioritize? Bill's string of failed partnerships does have more potential for an ongoing series with plenty of new locations and characters, but if you focus on that, you're leaving a really strong standalone story on the table. The origins of Bill are clearly the more interesting part of the story here, but I feel like that's a season, at most. But of course, the real problem with the Bill Cipher prequel series is that it just 
kind of ruins the mystique, you know? Bill is this chaotic demon thing from a place we've never seen who's lived more life than we could ever know. The fact that his origins are so shrouded with mystery is part of what makes him compelling. The Book of Bill does dive into a lot of his backstory, but it's careful to leave a lot of details out, in a way that you couldn't easily do in a full-fledged animated series. I just feel like a Bill Cipher prequel would be so entertaining to see, but ultimately do kind of a disservice to the character. I mean, screw it, you could just toss all the supernatural stuff out the window and do Dipper and Mabel go to school. Sure, there wouldn't be any monsters or secret societies, but there would be lockers, language arts class, the spring fling. Look, I don't know, man. Is there plenty of potential for a Gravity Falls prequel? Yeah, probably. But most of the concepts for prequels, whether it's Ford, Stanley, or Bill's stories, I'm just not sure how much longevity any of them have. They all feel like they'd be like a decent mini series or even a 30 minute special. Not sure if they got much substance to go further than that. The original show does a pretty damn good job of shining a light on these stories to begin with. So I'd also be kind of worried that a prequel would just be treading old ground, yeah, ironically. And what the original show doesn't explore, you know, for the most part, has been put into the books instead. That's why we have such great Gravity Falls books like Journal 3 and The Book of Bill. So while I definitely think there are prequel stories to tell in the Gravity Falls universe, it feels like what we've got has kind of covered that ground already. So the chances of getting that season negative one anti-Gravity Falls are probably not that likely. But if we can't go to the past, then I guess there's always the future. Option three, spinoff. At the end of Gravity Falls, we get a classic where are they now kind of segment. Grunkle Stan and Ford go off adventuring in their boat the Stan of War, sailing the sea and fighting giant squids. Seuss takes over running the mystery shack with his girlfriend. Of course, Dipper and Mabel go back home and old man McGucket moves into a giant mansion. Good for him. Good for him. With this big of a status quo change at the end of the series, there's obviously ways that these stories could then spin off into their own shows. Now, I don't think I'm breaking anyone's heart here by saying that Seuss running the mystery shack or lifestyles of the rich and crazy aren't particularly good spin-off ideas. But following the adventures of Stan and Ford as they've rekindled their brotherly relationship and set off on the globe-trotting adventures they've always wanted to experience, that's a great spin-off idea. You get all the same action, adventure, drama, mystery, History and comedy that you want from Gravity Falls in that concept. And with that setup, you could even potentially kill two birds with one stone, allowing the story of Stan and Ford now to become a lens into Stan and Ford's past, allowing this spinoff to also explore some prequel concepts. But you know, to be fair, maybe we should give our good boy Seuss a chance. He is one of the most beloved characters in the show after all. So what would a Seuss spinoff look like? Well, as established by the end of Gravity Falls, Seuss is promoted to be the new owner of the Mystery Shack. He dons the suit and fez and takes over the duties of Mr. Mystery, giving tours of the many uh, supernatural attractions that Stan cobbled together with a bunch of garbage. That sets up a lot of potential for just good comedy. Seuss trying to bullcrap his way through running this tourist trap while also just being so intensely passionate about it. It's a really likable premise. Plus, we see his girlfriend Melody's running the place with him and going deeper into their relationship and dynamic would be kind of interesting. And since Seuss is one of the only members of the main team still living in Gravity Falls, we can still see a bunch of other familiar faces and locations. So, you know, we'd get to see the return of Wendy, Gideon, Old Man McGucket, uh, Toby Determined, I don't know, all those guys. And of course, there's no reason the Stans or Dipper and Mabel couldn't make a few appearances too. But overall, I could see this being mostly a comedy-driven show about Seuss just trying to run the shack. I can't imagine it would delve too much into any action or mystery, It'd just be goofy and, you know, the more I describe this, the more it just sounds like the Patrick Star show, but with Seuss. Okay, yeah, maybe that's not the best idea. Really, uh, the big reason that I doubt a Gravity Falls spinoff would work is because, quite frankly, I just don't know if a Gravity Falls show of any kind can really work without Dipper and Mabel. These two aren't just the main characters, they're the heart of the show and the driving force behind its mystery plot. Dipper and Mabel have such a curiosity for the world around them that isn't really matched by any other set of characters. Their sense of discovery is what makes Gravity Falls so engaging to watch and why people got so invested in the history in real life, cracking codes and solving ARGs and all that bull. Maybe you could get close to that with Stan and Ford, but I, I, I'm not sure. And again, the only real spinoff you could do with Dipper and Mabel is just 
put them in school. Literally follow that bus at the end and just let the show keep rolling from there. Yeah, it's like those later seasons of Ed, Ed, and Eddie where summer break ends and suddenly they're all in school for some reason. Well, I know the reason summer break's over, but that's that's how school systems work. Duh. I remember those episodes. I like those episodes, but I don't really think they were popular. A Dipper and Mabel being back in school after the most life-changing summer they could have ever experienced would uh, be interesting, I guess, but I doubt it would be a bit you could stretch for even an entire season. And honestly, it kind of feels like a fan fiction idea more than anything. I don't know. I'm not saying it's fully impossible to make a good Gravity Falls spinoff show. I just think, again, it's a lot harder than you might expect, especially if you have to break up the family dynamic that the show really hinges on. Finding a way to build on top of this show with more seasons of anything, continuation, prequel, or spinoff, all while retaining and respecting the established canon is just so complicated. And the even bigger roadblock here is the series creator, Alex Hirsch. Dude still loves Gravity Falls and clearly still has stories to tell, but he's also made it pretty clear that he's not super interested in working on more seasons of Gravity Falls, you know, for TV. I heard him say in an interview that he enjoys tackling mediums he's not sure if he can pull off. I'm most interested in doing things if I don't entirely know if I can pull it off. My interest in it is very dependent on the medium. Like part of why I wanted to do the Book of Bill is like, oh, this, this one character perspective thing and it's gonna be, the art's gonna be really experimental. Like I, I'm really creatively restless. Something that feels like a new precipice for me gets me really hyped. So now that he's done Gravity Falls, the idea of just doing more for the sake of more doesn't really appeal to him. At least that's what I got from the interview. And I was talking about all this with uh, Lee from Film Theory and he, ever so wise, reminded me that Alex Hirsch does not own Gravity Falls. <laughs> At the end of the day, Disney owns the IP and can do whatever they want with it. Hell, they've already made Gravity Falls books without any of Alex's knowledge or involvement. And look how that turned out. But let's face it, ever since the Book of Bill came out, Gravity Falls has been more popular than it's probably ever been. Disney could, if they really wanted to, bypass Alex entirely and just make any new Gravity Falls show they want to capitalize on that huge surge of interest from fans. But yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic here, dang it. <laughs> so if Alex Hirsch doesn't want to make a new Gravity Falls TV show, then what if we go outside of TV? Option four video game. Now we're getting into the funky ones, and honestly, the ones that might have a higher potential of actually happening one day. Alex Hirsch is actually on record saying that if he could do anything he wanted, he'd want to make a Gravity Falls video game. Oh, you know what I mean, like a real Gravity Falls video game. Okay, so yeah, technically a Gravity Falls video game already exists and has existed for like nine years. It's called Gravity Falls Legend of the Gnome Gemulets and it was made back in 2015 for the Nintendo 3DS. That's how old we're talking here. I mean, the 3DS has been dead for like six years now. And unfortunately, the game itself, it isn't anything special. It's your bog standard 2D platformer with really simple, really easy levels and boss fights. The art and animation is kind of nice, but ultimately it's not really worth going out of your way to find a copy. I did a whole playthrough in a video a while back if you're interested, but considering I beat it in like an hour and used copies are going for $50. 70? Okay, that must be new because that that does not sound right. Yeah, 100%. Don't drop money like that on a game like this. But uh, where Gnome Gemulets was just kind of your average, unremarkable cartoon tie-in game, what Alex Hirsch wants to do is make a real, proper game that goes in-depth into the lore in the way the show never had the chance to. But from the article I read, he doesn't seem to go much further than that. So let's think about it. What would make a good Gravity Falls game? Well, first, you gotta pin down exactly what makes the Gravity Falls show a special and unique experience. You know, what are the fans here for? Well, obviously, Gravity Falls fans, especially today, are here for the mysteries, the code, the puzzles, and of course, the characters, the story, the comedy, and the nostalgia. And all that, to me, points to one option, point and click adventure game. Now hear me out, these kind of games aren't necessarily super popular today, but imagine a game in the Gravity Falls universe based off of something like Sam and Max, Monkey Island, or Day of the Tentacle. These kind of games were all the rage back in the 80s and 90s and focused exclusively on storytelling, comedic character interactions, and really in-depth puzzle solving. Imagine a game where you can play as Dipper, Mabel, Stan, and Ford, all gathering clues, cracking codes, and solving puzzles in order to unearth some new 
mysterious secret somewhere in the depths of Gravity Falls. It would fit the show perfectly and satisfy all the ravenous fans who have been trying to crack the Book of Bill ARG for like months now. Uh, I guess the obvious thing here is that these kinds of games don't have much high energy, real time gameplay. You're not usually gonna be swinging swords, shooting guns or throwing punches in a game like this. So there's also the option of taking all the story driven puzzle solving stuff and putting it into say an RPG instead. You know, think like Paper Mario, old school Final Fantasy, things like that. This could work for sure. But in the world of modern cartoons that get turned into video games, there's already a lot of RPGs, honestly. <laughs> Basically all the Steven Universe video games are RPGs in the vein of Paper Mario. Adventure Time Pirates of the Enchiridion is also a full-fledged turn-based RPG. And most of the other Adventure Time games tend to be Zelda clones, which aren't exactly RPGs, but they're in a similar family. Except my favorite Adventure Time game, Finn and Jake Investigations, which is a point and click adventure game focused on solving puzzles and uncovering mysteries in the land of Ooh. I'm just saying, in the world of modern cartoon games, the RPG thing is kind of common. And I just think it would be cool for Gravity Falls to do something a little more unexpected. And a game that can focus exclusively on storytelling, character interactions, and puzzle solving is exactly what a fan base this dedicated to lore hunting and ARG code cracking would just eat up. Plus, I mean, if you want an RPG with the Gravity Falls style, you can just check out our sponsor, Bloomtown. Click the link. Unfortunately, in that same interview from before, Alex Hirsch said that while he's always wanted to make a real Gravity Falls game, he's ultimately not in control of that either. He still doesn't own Gravity Falls, so something like this would be entirely up to Disney. And Disney does have a solid track record of making great video games that can really subvert your expectations when they want to. There was a pretty long stretch there after Disney Infinity kind of petered out that Disney just didn't seem to care about making games anymore. So they shut down Disney Interactive, their entire games division. But there have been some moves lately to revitalize the world of Disney games. I mean, Epic Mickey, one of Disney's biggest and riskiest video game experiments, got a big remaster just this week. Plus you got really successful stuff like Disney Dreamlight Valley, and it's not in the video game world, but right now Disney has a really successful trading card game going called Disney Lorcana. As someone who pays attention to the trading card world, that has been everywhere. Like I've been seeing it in stores more than like Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. Those two things don't necessarily have any representation for like uh, Disney Channel cartoons yet, but who knows, maybe. Uh, Gravity Falls, Phineas and Ferb, all of those would be great additions to those games and uh, trading card things. It could happen, I don't know. So, you know, while Alex Hirsch might not have the ability to just find a developer and make a Gravity Falls game, I don't know, maybe if there's enough demand, Disney might do it. In which case, please consider this my official pitch for the Gravity Falls point and click adventure game, Day of the Triangle. I'm trying. If anyone at Disney is watching, feel free to take that idea. Just make sure to credit me, pay me, and hire me on full time. Moving on. Option five, movie. To me, this is not only the best option out of the lot, but the one that I think has the best chance of actually happening. What if Gravity Falls came back for one last big feature length adventure? Well, turns out Alex Hirsch is actually kind of down for this. An interview clip of him showed up on my TikTok feed talking about the idea of a movie in the wake of the Book of Bill coming out. This is actually the same interview that I talked about a little bit earlier, where he said that he's mostly interested in tackling mediums that he's not 100% sure he can pull off. And since he's not really done a big theatrical film, he's still pretty open to the idea of tackling a Gravity Falls movie. And according to him, Disney has technically given him the opportunity to make one, but not really. I would do a Gravity Falls movie, but it would have to be a movie. You know, later they said after the show was over, they're like, are you interested in a Gravity Falls movie? And I'm like, I finished the story. That would have been the movie. But hey, I might be able to think of a one-off story that creates a big new adventure. But but again, it would have to be a movie, not just a long episode. And they're like, oh, never mind. What Alex wants to do is make a big budget animated feature film. What Disney wanted was usually to just make a slightly longer episode of the show, you know, a TV movie. And Alex was never really interested in that. So just just like the video game, we're kind of at a dead end here. However, I think there's more to this because after reading the book of Bill, I honestly think Alex has set up everything he needs to make the perfect Gravity Falls movie that would act as a true capstone to the series. So in the book of Bill, while diving into his backstory, Bill Cypher talks a lot about his home turf, the Nightmare Realm. This is where he went after destroying everything in the second dimension where he was actually born. He fled to the Nightmare Realm, formed a gang of hench maniacs and started causing chaos all over the place. Bill could have easily 
likely stayed here for as long as he wanted, but there was a problem. The Nightmare Realm lacked any stable physics. It was literally just a realm of complete and utter chaos, meaning the entire reality was unstable and slowly but surely folding in on itself. Every day, Bill could see this thing, the edge of reality, getting closer and closer to him and his gang. And if something passes over the edge of reality, they don't just die, they cease to exist. They're gone. They never were. <laughs> Which is why Bill wants to enter our dimension in the first place. Of course, in the show, Bill is able to successfully open a portal to the Nightmare Realm and bring all of that unbridled chaos into our more stable dimension. But he's defeated and everything goes back to normal. But that ending was open-ended enough in terms of whether or not Bill Cipher could come back that we are still talking about it in 2024. So let's say, hypothetically, Bill Cipher was working on a way to come back. He broke out of whatever interdimensional therapist's office he was sentenced to and slowly but surely started building his path back to Gravity Falls. And say that that happened to overlap with Dipper and Mabel returning to Gravity Falls, whether that's, you know, one year in the future, three years, five years, 10 years, doesn't matter. And as signs of Bill's return make their way into their dimension, the Pines family decide that they need to put a stop to this before Bill can make it back to Gravity Falls. So instead of the Nightmare Realm coming to them, they go into the Nightmare Realm themselves to take Bill down once and for all, all while the edge of reality gets closer and closer, leading to, in the end, Bill being defeated by being pushed over the edge of reality and blipped out of existence, putting a stop to his schemes permanently. The Pines make it back to Gravity Falls and their story can officially end. I think this would be the perfect way to bring back Gravity Falls. You know, taking the fight to the Nightmare Realm really raises the stakes tremendously. Plus, you get all your favorite characters back with no compromises. You get to keep Bill as your main villain and you get to eradicate him in a way that removes all possibility that he might come back, which will close the story off with no more loose ends. And it's all propped up by information established in the book of Bill. And heck, you could still incorporate elements of almost all the other ideas we've touched on today. And you know, we can see more of Stan and Ford's adventures. We can see what Dipper and Mabel have been doing back home. We can see Seuss running the mystery shack. And because a movie like this needs to reestablish a lot of the story and context, we can even get that deeper dive into Bill Cipher's backstory, bringing a bunch of stuff we've only ever read about or seen on the ARG website onto the big screen. If I could cast my vote for anything to bring Gravity Falls back, it would 100% be this hypothetical movie pitch and the video game, let's be honest. Again, ultimately none of this is up to us or Alex Hirsch, it's up to Disney. And Disney just kinda has a weird relationship with any animated series that isn't about platypus secret agents. But while the whole Book of Bill ARG hasn't necessarily led to anything major yet, the noise we Gravity Falls fans have made over this for the last month is impossible to ignore, even for Disney. And at a time when Disney has been scraping the bottom of the barrel for properties to revive or remake for years, I mean, who knows? Maybe Maybe they'll actually listen to us and give Alex Hirsch the chance to not bring the show back, but do something new, fresh, and exciting with one of the most innovative cartoons of all time. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of ideas. You could hire me and think I'd do a good job making Triangle Dangle and his Wangly Tangle, whatever I called it. <laughs>